Well, I want to welcome everybody to Wayne County. It's nice to, to see all the uh, media here that's interested in what's going on in our area. And, um, Governor DeSantis just finished riding around with one of my deputies, Deputy Garrett Abel, and we showed him some of the issues that we have here in, in our area in small rural Iowa. I'm fully supportive of Ron DeSantis for president for a number of reasons. And, and first is for him taking time to come down here to small town Iowa and see what's going on. Um, spend some time in my shoes as a law enforcement officer in a rural county. Uh, you just don't see any other presidential candidate coming down here and taking time to do that and to see what it's really like out here. Um, secondly, I know he will fully back the blue as president of the United States as he has done in Florida. I know he's done many things in Florida to help law enforcement and, and I appreciate all that. And Iowa has done much similar things, but he has even gone above and beyond what uh, we see here in Iowa. And we know that our state supports uh, back the blue. It's about time to have a leader who supports law enforcement, not defunds them the, the way things are going now nationally. Uh, when the country turned its back on cops in 2020, when criminals were lighting cities on fire, uh, Governor DeSantis stood up for the law enforcement in Florida and, and ended up, that's why he's recruited several law enforcement officers from across the country because it's better in Florida than it is many places in our country. So um, right now, police officers do not have a friend in Washington, but we need one now more than ever. Uh, recruiting is tough, morale is low, and, and I know that uh, as president, Governor DeSantis will, will take care of us here in law enforcement. So I appreciate him coming yeah. and taking time to, to be Thank with you. us. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Sure. Sheriff Anderson, Appaloosa County, Iowa. I'd like to echo Sheriff Davis's um, comments. However, personally, Governor DeSantis, I want to personally thank you and your family for giving the American people the opportunity to support a candidate for the presidency of the United States of America. We know and have faith on day one, you and your team, without distraction, will secure our border, restore our economy, strengthen our military, and we also have faith that you will establish a foreign policy that will bring the United States of America back to the table as a respected and feared world power. When I talk about um, border security, why Iowa? I will tell you a small story. Every state in the United States is a border state. Eagle Pass, Texas. I am 25 miles east of here. Why is that important to border security? We had two immigrants that come across the border in Eagle Pass in a rail car. Our local county railroad called, can you meet us out in the county? We went out, we found two deceased individuals from Honduras. They come across Eagle Pass. We had to take care of all the expenses, the autopsies locally as a county. We had to try and deal with the um, Honduras Embassy to try and give respect to the deceased family members. That's a challenge, folks. It affects, I'm from a county, 13,000 people. I am a border state, border county. So we're asking for that support. And thank you and God bless you. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, go ahead, Tom. Well, why is a representative from Kentucky, a U.S. representative here in Iowa? Well, I used to be a county executive of a county that had 13,000 people. And I'm familiar with these struggles and these problems. What well, you know, it's a rural county in Kentucky and a lot of our problems are coming across the border too. Um, I served with Governor DeSantis when he was in the House of Representatives for six years. And um, he was very strong on the border then. And right now we, totally lack leadership on the border in Washington, D.C. We can pass all the bills we want, all the appropriations we want, but if you don't have a chief executive who is going to take a leadership role in this and enforce his cabinet officials and the people who are responsible for the border into doing their jobs, then it's just like pushing a string uphill. And so that's why I'm here supporting Governor DeSantis for president. I know when he gets in that office, we're gonna have leadership on the border and that'll, that'll result in alleviating a lot of the drug problems and the other issues that we see in, in small communities. And with that, I'll give you okay. Governor DeSantis. Well, thank you. 
Well, uh, uh, thanks to Sheriff Davis for hosting us. We were able to go on a ride along to see some of the uh, the issues that they're facing here, uh, even in, in, a, in a rural community far away from the southern border. You're seeing the effects of that, not just in terms of the narcotics and the drugs, but also in terms of some of the problems that flow from that, in terms of people using drugs, getting addicted to drugs, developing problems with, with mental health. Uh, we were able to go to a hospital and look to see uh, how they're coping with some of the things, and they'll have people in there who uh, are in the emergency room for, for, for a month almost because uh, of mental, mental health problems. And, and so this is an issue that really uh, spans the country and we got to do a lot on all these things. On the border, we are going to bring the issue to a conclusion once and for all. We, we know Biden was going to do what he did. He said, come illegally, basically. He was telling people to do that. Uh, he, he campaigned on, on open borders when he ran for president. But Republicans have promised uh, to solve this problem for many, many years, and it hasn't gotten done. I'm going to get it done. Uh, it's going to involve declaring it to be a national emergency on day one, mobilizing all available resources, including our military, to be on that border, stop the invasion, uh, make sure when people come illegally that they're sent back. You've got a lot of military-age males showing up from all around the world, from China, from the Middle East. Uh, we need a president that's going to go in there, identify those people, and send them back uh, to their home country. I think that's very important for the security of our own country. Uh, we will do the border wall. I think that that's something that will, will absolutely be value added to stop the illegal migration. Uh, the way you do it is you, you, you put uh, fees on the remittances that people send to foreign countries. That'll fund billions of dollars uh, to do the border wall. I'll actually get that done. It can't just be a campaign slogan. You got to deliver. Uh, and then we're going to hold the Mexican drug cartels accountable. They are poisoning people by the tens of thousands. And we were just talking to some of the sheriffs just now, talking about examples. And I've cited examples like this myself, where you'll have a young person, high school, college, in their 20s, take a pill, thinking it's something else. It's laced with fentanyl, and they're effectively poisoned to death. Uh, and that's happening in communities all across this country, and it needs to stop. And it will stop once we get a handle on this border. So help is on the way. Uh, we understand that this is an issue that affects people nationwide. Yes, here in Iowa uh, and every state uh, in the continental United States. And so we're going to get the job done. I'm also pleased to be here to show my support for the men and women of law enforcement. I appreciate the sheriff pointing out what we've done in the state of Florida. And I think that it's something when you're doing bonuses, for example, all new recruits get a $5,000 signing bonus, whether they're municipal, police uh, department, sheriff's department, state law enforcement, you get that. We have recruited people from other states like California, Illinois, and New York. Uh, and that's important. And, and people want to, obviously, when prices are rising, to be able to get that extra money is big. But I think much more important is just it shows that the state of Florida and our communities really support the mission that law enforcement does. We understand the key role that they play in our communities. We're saying new recruit coming in out of the academy, $5,000 bonus, that's our way of saying that this is a noble profession and it's something that you should aspire to. We were talking, I was talking with the deputy uh, about how when he came in and where they are now, um, even in a place like Iowa where, where people support law enforcement, you used to have people lining up for, for, for jobs in law enforcement, same with Florida. You know, now that's just not true through most of the of the country. And so we want to make sure that, that people are uh, appreciative, but that people want to join. And so as president, we'll be using the bully pulpit to make sure that people know that it's an integral part of American society. It's an Amer integral part of successful communities. And the places that defunded the police, they live to regret that. It did not work. Uh, and a lot of people were victimized who didn't really need to be victimized. So um, I'm glad to be here to say uh, they can count on me. I appreciate all the support from the sheriffs. We've gotten so many sheriffs throughout Iowa for the, for the Iowa caucus and the presidential nomination. And we've had a huge amount of law enforcement support all throughout the country. Help is on the way there too. Okay, any questions? Governor, what's your timeline for completing the border wall? Is that something you think you can do within a year, two years? And then- My job is to get it done. Um, and I will get it done and it has not gotten done and, and we will do it and we'll start on day one and we won't stop until it's done. So part, I mean, part of the reason the border wall did not get done was because of Democrats in Congress, there was a long shutdown in 2019, oh. as you know. I mean, how will you bridge that gap? Well, but no, if you, if you think about it, what happened was 
uh, when uh, Trump came in, uh, they focused on the issues that Paul Ryan and some of the people in Congress wanted. And there were a lot of the Republicans who did not really want a border wall. Uh, the people wanted the wall. Uh, I wanted the wall. Thomas wanted the wall. And a lot of other uh, members of Congress did. But there wasn't the emphasis on that until deeper into the administration. Finally, they declared the emergency and were able to move funding over from, I think they use MILCON funding. So, so we're gonna start on day one um, and we're gonna go do it. And just think about it. The last year of the Trump administration, March of 2020 and December of 2020, two different $2 trillion plus spending bills. And yet was their money, for, could they, could, they can do 4.2 trillion in, in nine months, but they couldn't do 5 billion uh, for, for a wall at some point or whatnot. So you got to get it done. Uh, this is important. It's not uh, terribly a lot, a lot of money. And the way when you do the remittances, if you charge the fees, that money goes right in there. And so you're going to be able to do it. And it's got to be something that is, uh, that is a priority. And it will be a day one priority. That and all the other things, because changing the policy is important. Uh, our, uh, characterizing the cartels appropriately for what they're doing is important. And so we're going to do all those. Governor, on the Supreme Court, you named um, Clarence Thomas as one of the, the top jurors on the bench. Now, have you been at all concerned about the, um, the course of gifts he's received on the bench? And do you think the Supreme Court was right to uh, install a, an ethics code? So I think what you have is a, a coordinated effort by people that don't like him uh, to go after him on these things. And I think it was probably that it wasn't terribly clear, but you have liberal justices who have done similar things and you didn't have the same thing. So they're going after Clarence uh, because they know he's effective. Uh, I'm fine if they want to clarify all this and they think that that's that, great, do it. Uh, but I don't think he was doing anything outside of what was the standard practice for most justices over the years. They have done these things. Uh, they have done trips and, and whatnot. And I think that he, he disclosed what was required. And if there are things that weren't necessarily required, maybe not, but I think they'll do that going forward if that's the way it is. So no, I think, he, I think, it's, a, I think it's an attack um, on him. He's faced a lot from the time he was confirmed and now till the present. And you know, he's, a, he's a tough guy and, um, and I know he'll, uh, he'll get through it. Governor, um, President, former President Donald Trump is facing several legal battles, many of them which will be occurring, you know, either days before or on the days of very important election days in 2024, such as the Iowa caucus, Super Tuesday. Are you worried that this could spur last minute support for the former president, energize the base, energize people who might see it as people coming after him, government, um, uh, government lawyers, court system? I'm just curious your thoughts. I don't know, um, but I do. I do know this: if if 2024 is a referendum on the failures of the current administration, and we're providing a positive vision to take this country forward, we're going to win. If 2024 is a referendum on Donald Trump specifically, or or any of the other uh, issues that are not germane to um, getting people able to get ahead again, securing the border, do, uh, cracking down on crime, doing all that. That's going to give the Democrats an advantage because they're going to be able to, to hide from the key issues. The campaign will be subsumed and, and all the other things. And I think someone like Biden is probably going to be able to hang out in the basement again and, and probably get away with it. And, and so that's not the way we win. And I think the win needs to be focusing on what's the problem with the direction of the country and here's how we solve it. And that would be what, what, my, what my candidacy would represent and in a way that I think would increase our chances of doing well. Governor, you're focusing today on mental health and drug overdoses. What did you do in Florida to help combat this that you can bring nationally? So we instituted a program called the uh, Coordinated Opioid Recovery Network. And we started, uh, started out of a, a pilot program in some counties. It's now expanded to a lot more. But basically the premise of it is you'll have somebody who will overdose. And you know, these guys in law enforcement now, they, it's routine to carry around the Narcan. So someone overdosed, they do the Narcan, uh, people survive, and then usually they just get discharged from the hospital one, once they're back, put back on the street. Well, the, the chance of a relapse is high if somebody is addicted. So the, the core network is, okay, let's provide support and intervention instead of just discharging back onto the street with no support, uh, let's get them so that they're able to cope with this. And there's a number of different things that are done. Uh, what you found is the relapse rate has gone down. 
And we actually had a reduction year over year in overdose deaths. I think we were the only large state to have a reduction year over year. So, so that's a model that we've seen success with, uh, and that would be something that we would want to work on with, uh, with people all throughout the country. Governor, on the debate stage and on the campaign trail, why have you referred to Arab clothing as man dresses? Because that's what we think, call it in the military. Okay. Do you think it could be considered prejudice? No. You, it's, so? if, you, if anyone that spends two seconds in Iraq on active duty would know what we were talking about. I think every veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan knew what I was talking about. Uh, that's just the lingo that you use. I don't think the people were being prejudiced when they were doing it. I think they were just describing the facts of, of life there, which is that you don't know who was hostile or who was not based on what they are wearing because they were not wearing uniforms to distinguish themselves as an enemy force. They were blending into the civilian population, dressing the way normal civilians in that part of the world would dress. And you have to determine, and sometimes a split second, you know, is there a is there an IED slap to their uh, strap to their body? If they're coming out, they could blow up. I mean, they would blow up service members sometimes. Um, it's not uncommon in that part of the world to just walk around with an AK-47. That is not that does not mean you're a, a terrorist because that's just a normal thing to do. So okay, someone's got that. You see that? Maybe they're just a civilian. Maybe not. So those are all things that go through. And um, yeah, we we will. Um, we will continue to to uh, reflect on that military service. Governor, the former president um, campaigning in New Hampshire today uh, said that immigrants coming to this nation are poisoning the blood of our country. Do you think that's appropriate rhetoric from someone who wants to lead the free world, a nation of, of immigrants? Well, I didn't hear what he said, and so I don't want to uh, respond until I get to see. Um, what I would say, though, is uh, we have to be smart about what we're doing in this country. And when you have people that are coming to this border, coming across our border illegally uh, from countries that are hostile to us, you have people from Iran, you have people from Russia, you have people from China, other countries in the Middle East. I remember when I had my first uh, stint down there sending guys down from Florida in 2021, we saw Libyans coming across the border and especially the military age males. I do not think that that is something that is in this country's interest. I think that there's huge risk for, for problems. Uh, certainly, uh, there's no way you can tell me 8 million people that none of the people who come across that border are involved with terrorism. I, there definitely are some that are going to be involved in terrorism going forward. I think it's put the American people at risk, and I think it's been really, really uh, unacceptable. I also have pointed out when there was this debate about bringing in massive numbers of people from the Gaza Strip uh, as, as quote unquote refugees, I'm just like, well, wait a minute. They're teaching the kids to hate Jews. They don't have Jew uh, Israel even listed on the map. The goal of the, of the society is the destruction of Israel. Whether they're affiliated with Hamas or not, you know, that's some toxicity to be bringing in to this country. And I don't think that that's in our interest to do that. I think Europe has brought in a lot of people in mass numbers and now you see things like anti-Semitism at higher levels in Europe than at any time uh, since the rise of Nazi Germany. So uh, uh, nobody has a right to come to this country. When you come to this country, you got to be somebody that believes in the values and wants to assimilate into this country. And I think that really look around the world, you've seen, particularly in Europe, a lot of movements where there's not, they're not interested in assimilating into the society. And I think it's created a lot of divisions in Europe. I think they're having a lot of problems. So we're certainly not going to repeat those mistakes here in the United States. Uh, we're gonna be very tough on, on who's able to come into this country because I think that uh, what's going on now uh, at the border in particular uh, has been a total train wreck. All right, thanks guys, appreciate it.